Is it recording? I guess we're recording. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe. Probably for sure. Good morning, everybody. It is 6.35. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to reload my coffee. I forgot. I had to clean the coffee machine. Anyways, good morning. It's about three hours before the open of trading on Wall Street. It's time to get your global macro on. Welcome to Quant Box Live, where we uncover the best fundamental investment opportunities across the globe by looking at careful analysis of sentiment, AI, employment, GDP, technical analysis, open trade positioning of institutional and retail investors, seasonality, and now market sentiment, meaning, well, not just the long-term economics, but what's actually happening in the market today, this hour. And we're trying to combine both. My name is Wayne McDonald. I am the founder of this organization we call QuantBox. I'm also a Harvard-educated economist. I love the rationale of why markets, or money, I should say, why money moves around the world. To maybe buy a natural resource like iron ore and coal from Australia, or maybe foreigners uh, want to buy U.S. treasuries or the U.S. stock market. If you're Malaysian and you want to buy N NVIDIA stock today, you're going to need some USD. So anyway, it's kind of an interesting thing. It's the reason why money moves. Now, if you are not a subscriber and you're watching this on YouTube, guess what? This video is already many hours late. Why don't you swing on quantbox.co and take the trial? It's less than eight bucks for a week. It's a pretty amazing stuff. But when you log in on your $8 trial, you also get an entire macroeconomics training course, which is, I think, 16 hours long. You also get a training course in statistical analysis, so you know what, you know, for example, how to use a scatter plot. Oh, my God, all for your $8. So why don't you give that a try? Let me do the, uh, oh, I don't have a disclaimer on this page. What? Let's try it here. Okay, there we go. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative. I'm waiting to drink my coffee. Ah. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term. Never risk money you cannot afford to lose. While I log into here, uh, does anybody know what time NVIDIA earnings is released? I know it's today, of course, but is it this morning or is it after, after the close? That's going to be the big mover. Mark says after. Oh, my God. It's going to be a long day. All right, well, let's get to it. Currently, the markets are mixed, so Europe hasn't really done much for us, nor did Asia. Uh, the yield on the 10-year, it's still at 4.33. Oil, 78. I'll be honest with you. I bought it at 80. Wah, wah, wah. Right? Well, anyways, took a shot. Uh, gold still below 2,000. You know, we're still farting around 1,900. Remember, our target was 1891, I think, and it came down to 1890 and a half. So we're like less than a dollar off the bottom, and it's been above that target ever since. So, hey, good job. We had a good target. <laughs> SP 500 down below 44.44. Euro dollar down today. Bitcoin down today. So, if we look at a little bit more medium term, it's just ever so slightly bearish. On the longer term, it's more bearish. But the thing is, I believe the weekly evaluation was more bearish yesterday. So today is less bearish. Are we swinging around? And that's the whole question for this uh, uh, particular time of year based on seasonality. Is it going to move from risk off to risk on? Remember, we had the risk off call well before it became risk off. 
And now everything's risk off, but now we have the call for potential risk on again. So that's what we're looking for is the pendulum swinging. Okay. You can still see over the longer run, uh, VIX was up 19% or 18%, right? And the S&P 500 has been down during that period. Well, that makes sense. The yield on the 10-year T-note over the last month has just been crazy. That's crazy. A crazy amount of change. Okay. Dollar's been strong during that period. So the question is, will that shift around? And that's why we want to look at sh shorter term data as well. Taking a look at if anything is moving, what will it be? Took a, take a look at the scatter shot. And Blah, blah. Not much going on. Biggest loser is oil. Like I said, it was at like 81 and I bought it at 80 and now taken out. Now we've dropped quite a bit, but just, just in the last couple of hours. Uh, so that's a big mover at, at just over, you know, just about one and a quarter percent. That's it. Get rid of commodities. The biggest loser is pound yen. So you may have noticed all the yen pairs came down, all of them. Yeah. So you have CAD yen down, or sorry, pound yen down, CAD yen down, USD yen down, wowzer, Kiwi yen down, Aussie yen down. So we're, they're correlated, but we definitely have some yen strength. Okay. I haven't looked at it. Um, I haven't looked at it this morning. What a discussion about yield curve control again out of Japan, or maybe we hit a key rate. I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to do my research. <clears throat> European consumer confidence. Okay. What, you think it's rising? Everyone's getting happier? <laughs> we'll see. Look at the 30-year uh, mortgage rate. 7.6, but that's not even for a jumbo mortgage. Meaning, uh, what's the jumbo these days? 500,000. So uh, most people, in particular, like nobody in California has a 7% mortgage anymore. <laughs> like nobody. Uh, because you can't buy a house for 500,000. Um, so anyways, most people are going to be, what, closer to eight? Maybe even higher than that? That's crazy. That used to be a car loan. So... We were talking about this yesterday, and I believe the numbers that have been coming out prove that uh, people are not, they don't want to buy an old ratty house at at 9% mortgages. So um, existing home sales are, are not really happening and that they're going to move to new home sales. And that's today. So if you're going to buy a house, you're going to buy a new one. The major reason to it, though, is not necessarily just because it's nicer that nobody is selling their existing home. You have a 3% mortgage. Why would you sell your home to someone else and then go get a new home, assuming you want to live, and get a new home with an 8% mortgage? You'd get a worse off house. So if you're in a house, you're going to live in it for a very long time. And so the vacant houses, right, new houses are where you're going to move. So it's really a supply issue. So uh, so anyways, uh, watch for that. We have the new home sales coming soon. Canadian retail sales, we want to obviously watch and see if Canadians are still spending their money. 
Uh, it's also important because it's a component of GDP, aka consumption. Okay. Get some US PMI. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Do we right? And then manufacturing PMI. Okay. It's a small part of the economy, but hey. European consumer confidence, again, we already kind of looked at that. Uh, oh, it must be Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? Oh, my God. It's Wednesday. So we have EIA. So get ready for um, oil to move. Uh, we don't know the direction, but right now the direction is down. Global recession is probably part of that call. But nonetheless, you want to look at that. Oil will be a, a mover. I believe that's 10.30 in the morning. Okay. Drawdowns push oil up. Build ups push oil down. Uh, these headlines very often right now are deceiving because we then have to calculate, did we, did we pull oil out of the strategic petroleum reserve? Okay, uh, these are big numbers, though, of course. Okay, so a drawdown bigger than 3 million is most likely going to push oil up. Service PMI, manufacturing PMI out of Europe and Great Britain. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess today, is it today or is that tomorrow? Oh, that is tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, I mean, might as well talk about it. Tomorrow is the beginning of Jackson Hole Symposium, where central bankers get together. It used to be a real meeting, and it used to move the market if something unexpected happened, but nothing actually happened. Like, there wasn't even really a press conference. And then they started to realize people were tracking this, and then it became a fake meeting, <laughs> right? Where it's a paid vacation on tax, on taxpayers' dollars, and they go out there and they pretend, and they take pictures and they pretend they're friends. And they're like, "Oh, this is good. We're friends, and if we uh, if we band together, we can save the world." Uh, so now it's a, as Trump would say, fake meeting. <laughs> But, you, you know, they get frequent flower miles. <clears throat> so we'll leave it at that. So, you know, um, the, the thing that matters most today is NVIDIA. And apparently that's at the close. Uh, I'd say that oil inventories is pretty interesting because we're trying to figure this out. Um, should we... Is it a global recession play and oil is coming down or are we buying the dip? And that's a big, you know, that's what everyone's trying to figure out today. Just quickly to figure out where we are, you know, you couldn't get anything more bullish. 75% of institutions are long oil. So at what price do you want to add to your position? That's the big question. For example, Kathy Wood added some Zoom to her portfolio yesterday, right? So you got to like, are you going to add? Okay. Okay, I'm wondering, too, if the S&P 500 starts rolling over to the upside again. Okay, look, S SPX, S&P 500. Remember, it used to be way to the left. Now it's falling. Okay, great. But that's old news. That's already a week old. Not that we're slow. It's released. It's gathered on Tuesdays and reported on Friday. Okay. So on Friday, we'll get an update on what institutions were doing yesterday. So it's the most available news. But the thing is, it used to be way over here, most bullish, and then it's moved to slightly bearish, or fairly bearish even. And the thing is, if it's going to go back up, we want to be in the early part, 
not the very first part, but we want to be in the early part of that trend as it's born. Okay? Like a baby buffalo. <laughs> and then we're going to eat eat it. Yeah, uh, we're, we're going to go hunting. Right? So anyways, do some technical analysis. This is gold. Mm-mm-mm. Uh, changes so it makes more sense. Cool. So I bought some gold yesterday. And um, I'm just, uh, I, I'm testing a theory that most of the disinflation we've had is over. But we'll see. Uh, at Investor Boot Camp last night, yesterday, we did a fundamentals meeting, and one of the things we looked at um, using the Atlanta Fed was wages. We're, we're looking at wages. We also looked at uh, 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 job openings, but in this case, uh, we looked more specifically at um, predicted wages using very short-term data, not long-term data like the like the St. Louis Fed uses. So traditionally, I would use St. Louis Fed. Yesterday, I used Atlanta Fed, and we looked at wages falling. Now, they're still high relative to, um, you know, the past, meaning five years ago, 10 years ago. They're still high, but we're definitely in a trend of wages coming down. And that's like, th those are the sticky parts of inflation. And that is coming down. So uh, disinflation may not be over, but I'm caught between a rock and a hard place. Um, based on seasonality, I do believe, oh, I can't grab my drawing, my drawing tool won't work. Um, hang on. I do believe we're in a place, a time of the year. There we go. That the risk off could end but at the same time uh you know uh that aggregate demand could come back if we're going to avert a recession so inflation's coming down but gdp is still high so if we're not going into recession then aggregate demand increases also if aggregate demand increases then the disinflationary pressures, even with falling wages, because wages are still relatively high. So even if they're falling, it's actually healthier for the economy that wages are manageable. Um, but consumption stays high, so then demand stays high, and then inflation comes back. So I got that in the back of my mind. The other thing I'd like to point out is we have this, you know, this price action here. Down, 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 up, up, sell. All predicted by QuantBox well, weeks, months in advance. Down, 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 up, up, sell. 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 Down, down, down. Now, in January, eight months ago, we said on this particular week of the year, not last week, not next week, this week, risk on returns. Seriously, right? For all those on YouTube watching, January, I'm guessing 36 weeks ago, we said this week. A return to some bullishness. So I'm kind of like obligated, <laughs> you know, emotionally uh, to try. But you could also argue now as a technician, not as an economist, but as a technician, oh, that, that channel broke. So anyway, so in that scenario, when you get a higher high, uh, you buy the higher low. And so now, hopefully, I survive this, right? I know hope is a strategy. It isn't a strategy, but 
I already entered my trade, so <laughs> strategy already done. If I zoom in, you'll see I have a stop loss already. I can give it a little more space so you can see it a little more. Okay. What did I do? Wayne, what did you do? How did you do that? Oh, well, I looked at this. I use that as support. Cool. Okay. Had a stop here. Then I had to stop there. Now I have a stop there. I can't lose, only make money. Cool. Anyways, whatever. Would have one out of a million, right? You're one of a million, baby. So let me show you one I lost money on. I was in this trade yesterday. Uh, 80 was the price. Oops. Let's do it this way. Mm, 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 mm. So I believe it looked like this. I believe I had this going. Now we don't. Thank you to the person who invented stop losses. Look, it was working until it wasn't, huh? Just like that, like, oh my God. I was probably in that trade, what, eight hours? And then, uh, then it was, uh, then, whoa. So that's $3.50 has dropped. That's equivalent to 350 pips on a euro <clears throat> in a morning. That's a, that's a London open trade. 350 pips on a euro takes a week, not a morning. Now you're like, well, how could it be that equivalent? Is that move that really that big? No, oil is expensive to trade. Okay. And I'm still in the camp of if you believe a session has been averted and that we are reducing inflation while maintaining GDP, because that's all I honestly care about. We could, we could have um, persistently high inflation in the United States. Typically, inflation is less than two. What if it was five? Could you maintain 4 or 5% double historic average? Could you do it with 5% GDP? You bet. If you had 2% GDP and 5% inflation, now you got a problem. Two steps forward, one step back, right? So anyways. Uh, so our, our job here is to uh, try to get the right narrative and so if we are going to avert a recession uh, or it's extremely mild, then I probably want to buy it around 78 to 79. So I know it just made a lower low, but I might have to spend some time on the 15 waiting for a confirmation of change of direction. If you look at this chart, oh, it's bearish, bearish forever. If you look at a higher time frame, uh, somewhere around now, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be shocking if we did like a consolidation and then a higher high and we go back the other way, maybe, I don't know. Just don't be shocked. So just know what direction you're going. So it's been falling for eight hours. So if you're a New Yorker, um, you know, walking in going, hey, fellas, what are we doing today? I'm sure a London boy would love to sell their position to you. They would make a profit. You'd pick up, you know, their morning. Um, very often what I think is, um, you know, if the London boy sold it off, do the New York boys want to sell too, or do they want to buy low? See, the New York, uh, the London boys, they came into the office and sold oil high. And now the New Yorkers are going to come in the office and they're like, oh my God, oil's dropped like three and a half, four bucks. <laughs> buy it. You know, they're interested in oil too, because today is EIA inventories. 
Okay. Yesterday was IEA. No, no. A, uh, uh, AI. Oh, no, shoot. I've mixed up my, uh, my uh, acronyms. Uh, yeah. EIA. And uh, what's the other one? A, A, AEI. Is that right? No, nah, anyways. Forget it. Google it. <laughs> the, the private one. Uh, all right uh what else going on i uh, got to figure out the stock market today obviously um this uh, i know this is pointing down but this is probably a buy zone if you're like if you're a bear you've already sold it right so uh if you're a bull so let me change it by the way i have it set to be a bear so the logic that I have, the way it's set up now, is you move from the top of the channel, okay? This is 100% retracement from this, you see? So from a, for a bear, you notice this, because, you know, from a bull, when you make a higher high, you want to buy a higher low, right? Like, isn't that a bullish trade plan? Something like this? just covering technical analysis here right like that's what a bull would do if there were bulls so what does a bear do when they see that there's a hundred percent retracement well they're like there's no bull so this area that you would use as support as a bull ends up becoming resistance as a bear and so a bear's trade plan is this for the day but beware they already did it. So stop chasing price. You're right. You need to be up there with the pros. So now it's dropped for hours and hours. Now you're interested. Well, now we're back into a bullish zone. Okay. So I can tell you, let me draw it for you. Uh, this is where bulls will buy right here. I'm not saying they will. And I'm not saying it's a good idea, but the bears will look to buy there. Uh, and of course, if they don't, they'll get, uh, oh, or if they buy and get stopped out, this plummets down to the target. Today, NVIDIA is reporting, and it's a big deal. How big of a deal is it? The stock is up 200%. Maybe 250%. This year okay like this year huh how's your froyo company doing that you invested in <laughs> is it up 250 percent this year right anyways that's just amazing uh in a in a market that's not up even a hundred percent right so anyway, so uh, this could just pop and turn risk on or risk off. Like NVIDIA comes out with mediocre sales. <laughs> S&P 500 is going to tank. But on the flip side, if everything is right as rain and demand for AI is through the roof, GPUs are skyrocketing. You watch NVIDIA, right? I think we have more to lose than to gain, but it it's an important deal. So if you don't understand the game you're playing today on the S&P 500, don't play the game. You're going to get run over. Um, otherwise, if you think that it's going to come out as expected, that's that, that sucks, <laughs> right? As expected sucks. Worse than expected is terrible. Um, better than expected, this thing's going to go to the moon. Okay. So anyway, so uh, you got to pick your, your side. So that's a bear already had that plan. And uh, so that's done and dusted. Uh, the next plan that might present itself is something like this. Now, how do I know they're there? Is it just the role reversal? No. So I move this, I change the, uh, oops, which one do I have? Uh, weekly. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, you want this in bullish mode. Oh, got the wrong one. Um, yeah, okay, you want this in bullish mode. 
And there it is. Okay, I guessed. That's pretty good. Okay, bears are already enjoying the fruits of their labor. If you're a bull, now you got to be on a small time frame, even a five minute, and wait your turn. It's a symbiotic relationship. Wait your turn. If we're dancing, left foot forward, right foot back. If we both move our right feet, we get stepped on and we both lose. Emil, do you have a question? I don't know if my speaker's working. It might be better to just type it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I got a little gold, a little bullish move for my gold. Very nice. So, uh, yeah, so oil, the big news is at 1030. What else we have? Bitcoin is down, but that's no new. That's nothing new. Nothing new. Uh, but it is risk off. So now that we have this, um, for the risk here now for crypto, okay, is that we are in this range now. Um, I will, that, that's what the chart says. Now, I will supersede that by saying we are watching seasonality. And we're expecting a breakout. Now, I can't tell you for sure if it's going to be breakout to the upside or breakdown to the downside. But what I can tell you is it typically happens very soon, like this time of year. Pick your team. You need to do your research and tell me Bitcoin's a future or Bitcoin is trash. Fake money, <laughs> right? May, pick your team. But all we know is the move tends to happen uh, this time of year. Okay. Quite literally, I raced back from Cuba to be here this week because this week is that important. Last week wasn't that important. This week is important. So anyways. Uh, just to emphasize that it's real. And then I suppose we'll do one currency and we'll call it a day. Dollar strength is continuing. That is still risk off. And that would suggest a stock market coming down today. And so if I'm a bull... If I'm risk on and I'm expecting a big rally, um, NVIDIA could kill the whole thing today. Maybe. It'll either kill it or produce a, uh, the opportunity, meaning we have a, a quick drop today. Let's say the stock market drops 3% today, but it might rally 4% tomorrow and be at the bottom. You know, like, so I have to be very careful. I have to be very astute. I need to be prepared for every scenario. Remember that ready, willing, and able? That doesn't mean stand like a deer with lights, right? Staring at the headlights. That's not ready, willing, and able. That's run over. Uh, that's roadkill. So you want to plan things. If the stock market dropped 3% today, and you're actually a bull in the stock market, and you expect the stock market in the next five weeks to be up, that five weeks could be today or tomorrow that starts with this massive capitulation where like, oh no, it's the end of the world. NVIDIA only made $100 billion in three months. That's so terrible. And so it drops because all we get all the dumb money gets knocked out because they bought it really high, right? They paid way too, they paid 750 times earnings to buy <laughs> NVIDIA a week ago. So anyway, so it comes down, they get stopped out. There's a 3% drop in the stock market, 8% drop in NVIDIA, and then the whole world buys it back up because they are bulls and they have a plan. 
their old institutions are already got a contingency plan. What do we do if NVIDIA drops 8%? Buy it. Okay. What do we do if the stock market drops 4%? Buy it because we think it's going to be up by the end of the year. Okay. They're not chasing candles. Please stay next to the rivers and the lakes that you used to. Sorry, salt and pepper was in there somewhere. But um, but anyway, so start your contingency plans. USD CAD going up is risk off. That would be indicative of NVIDIA reporting disappointing numbers and the stock market falls and the dollar gets strong. Now, the... Um, you know, and the U.S. dollar. The, ring, the reason I bring up CAD is CAD is relatively strong versus some of the other pairs on the medium term. The other thing I want to point out, as food for thought, is every yen pair is down. That is also risk off. So that's either a sign everybody thinks Nvidia is going to report bad, or this is everybody getting out before the volatility. And this might be your opportunity if you are a long-term bull. Or you just say, look, we hit our target. Of course, of course it's coming down. Now, this blows people's mind, right? Because many investors, they don't have this type of information of like, why did it fall? Uh, it's supposed to. <laughs> it's like, uh, it hit the target and people took profit. Why? You didn't take profit? I don't know what's going on, right? Um, so... Luckily, you're on the clue train. Okay. Notice the correlation here. Precisely when the Japanese stock market comes down, the yen gains strength. Okay. It it pulled, okay. It pulled pound yen down. Swiss yen, I already showed you. Okay. There's our euro yen, which is another bullish one for me, anyways. Uh, Kiwi yen, dog with fleas, it's supposed to come down, but, you know, look, yen, yen strength just showed up. That's what this PSAR is actually showing us. But the bigger thing is if you were a bull, you know, uh, you have basically one last chance to be bullish, and that's basically the price we're at now. But a lot of people will miss that because New Yorkers, dumb money New Yorkers, are going to come in and like, oh, my God, all the yen pairs are down. Sell. This is me shaking my head if you can't see my webcam. No, 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 no. There's two choices if you're a New Yorker. Wait for a buying opportunity or don't sell it. It's kind of late, bro. The way you're trained is up here is the sell zone. So if you're a bear, you had a chance to take a double top and drop. And you're like, oh, but I didn't see it. Well, then you're not a bear. Why would you sell it in the New York Open on a 618? Have a plan, Stan. So here's your choice. Drop into a smaller time frame and plan out a move that looks like this. So you do that on a smaller time frame or where, okay, that's a higher low. What's the other thing a bull could do? Maybe if they wanted to. They, a bull can buy a higher low. Or a bull can buy a double bottom. Yeah, thank you. Denise has got it. Buy the double bottom. So you, you set plan A up first. So you're like, okay, well, we're at a price. Remember, we only have price and time, price. So you're like, I don't know when I'm going to buy it, but I know one price is, you know, 86.20. So drop into a 15-minute chart or even a five-minute chart and see if you have a technical entry. I don't, I don't really care. And this isn't a technical show where we use technical analysis to identify trends. So if you need to know technical analysis, join investorbootcamp.com. 
But what I mean, it would say here is I don't care if it's a moving average or an oscillator or price action. I don't care on a 15-minute chart or a five-minute chart. You only know if that occurs at this price, that's probably an opportunity you want to consider. So a higher high, higher low, for sure. Okay. And that's what a New Yorker should be doing. London boys already sold it. So if you right enter anything different, then you're just paying the London boys. But your plan B, because now if it continues falling, you don't buy it because you wouldn't have gotten an entry on a 15-minute chart, right? So you sit and you wait. No, oh, shoot, it's fallen farther and further and further and further. And you're like, I don't really know when it's going to make a reversal. But if it makes a reversal around 86 or maybe 86 or, or 85, 80, somewhere in that little zone there. I mean, that's only like 25 pips in here. If, if, so it's an if then statement, if I'm a bull and price and if price drops here, and if on a small time frame it gives me a little reversal pattern, then I take it long. That's it. That's that's if if you do plan, that's plan B now. Or plan A look like this. Okay. That's the only thing a bull does. If if you do anything else than that, you're being creative. And I'm being polite. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> um, you're doing something that probably ha has not been tested and proven to actually work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyways, um, that's that. And if you were a bear, you, you already got paid. But the thing is, you should also know all of this if you're a bear. Because plan A and plan B are probably going to knock you out of your bearish trade. So you should recognize, <clears throat> in particular where we are now, there's real risk that you're going to lose some of this profit. So if you were a bear, you'd probably take some profit if you were worried about it. Maybe you have a longer-term view and you're like, no, 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 no. We're going to go and we're going to make a lower low and then consolidate below, you know, around 85. Oh, cool. Or maybe, <clears throat> maybe you have a much bigger point of view and you're like, this is going to be a tough fourth quarter. GDP is going to fall. Inflation is going to go up. Oh, my God. And the Bank of Japan is going to uh, change their yield curve control. Oh, my God. Well, then, pff, you know, the bare minimum is we're going to 80, but that doesn't. I, you know, if, if we're going into a global recession and, and the bank of Japan's ending yield curve control, boy, they 80, we might be on our way to something significantly less than 80. Okay. I mean, look, it wasn't that long ago that we were at 60, maybe the 90 was the top. Okay. So. Cool. So then you're like, Wayne, that's really confusing. You said I can't sell it. No, you just can't sell it at that price. Okay. You can get the, right? Or at that time, I should say. You can't sell it at this time, but you can sell, right? You can sell the same price at a different time. That's all trading is, is time and price. Knowing to be a buyer or seller is way more interesting and way more powerful because then you can say, I'm going to sell at 86 and go for 60. If I can't make 2,000 pips on this, then, you know, 2,000 pips. Well, yeah, you're just saying, well, you believe that the global economy is going into a recession and there's a high probability that the Bank of Japan adjusts their yield curve control in particular because that's what's the bank of china is doing the people's bank of china and that they're going to do tit for tat now if you're thinking at that level you got this bro but if you're chasing candles uh you're going to get run over like a freight train 
because you're uh, if you don't have a higher level plan and you don't know why the markets are moving, then you're trading as analogous to a chicken with its head cut off, running around the farm, making a bloody mess of everything. I'd rather be the farmer <laughs> than the chicken. <laughs> so anyways, uh, have a wonderful day. Oh, it's going to be great. Remember, NVIDIA, but also uh, EIA oil inventories. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be a good trading day. It's going to be very interesting. This is an, a, a, an awesome trading week. And with that, I bid you adieu. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Cheers, eh?